This address is traditionally delivered at the Kremlin's St. George Hall. He says, I would like to start with words of gratitude to Russian soldiers fighting against international forces. Uh, there's a remark here about the glory of the Russian military in reference to those taking part in actions in Syria. Here in our audience, we also have the widows of two Russian soldiers killed, Russian fighting forces killed in the region. One, a Marine killed in search and rescue operations, and the other, that of the pilot uh, killed when his plane was shot down at the Russian-Turkish border. And now to observe a moment of silence in honor of all those who have died as a result of terrorist activities, that is to say, Russian soldiers and other Russian citizens. Esteemed colleagues, Russia for a long time has been standing on the front line in the fight against terrorism. It's a fight for fairness, life, and the future of people and civilizations. We all know what aggression and international terrorism means. Russia has faced terrorism since the mid-1990s. We experienced cruel terrorist attacks, the taking of hostages in the Caucasus and in Moscow, explosions in Moscow and other places. Terrorist attacks against railways and uh, underground trains, the metro system. Those tragedies took thousands of innocent lives and we will always grieve in the memory of those innocent people who died because of the terrorists. It has taken us more than 10 years to break the backbone of terrorism in Russia. We have almost eradicated terrorism in Russia, but there are still remnants of terrorist groups. We all remember the terror attacks in the city of Volgograd two years ago. Recently we had an attack on the, on, we, we had an, an attack on civilian, a civilian aircraft. It's impossible to achieve victory against terrorism uh, uh, as one single country because terrorism is financed from different sources. The threat of from terrorism is growing all the time. We still have an unsolved problem in Afghanistan. And there are no optimistic forecasts for that country. And then as to the Middle East and Northern Africa, Iraq, Libya, Syria, uh, these are zones of, of chaos and anarchy. This is a threat to the whole world. And we know why all this happened. We know who wanted to get rid of the unwanted regimes and by force to introduce regimes loyal to the motivating interests. That brought chaos and anarchy to those places. And then the interventionists just withdrew and left those people to fight each other. The recruitment of potential terrorists is taking place all over the world, including in Russia and the countries of the former Soviet Union. If we do not achieve victory against them, if we don't fight them and destroy them, then they will come back to Russia. And this is why we have decided they must be destroyed far away from Russia before they can come back to our country. This is why we took the decision to send our military to Syria to fight terrorism there. But I want to stress that in Syria, the Russian army 
and the Russian Air Force and Navy are fighting for Russia. They're fighting to defend Russia, modern Russian arms are very efficient and we will use all our means and all our military capacities to destroy terrorists. I want to thank all the people who are working in Russia's defense industries who developed the new state-of-the-art weapons that are so helpful in fighting terrorism. Russia has demonstrated its responsibility and its determination in its fight against terrorism. And our citizens, the citizens of Russia, have also demonstrated a deep understanding of the threat of international terrorism, the threat it poses not only to Russia, but to the whole world. Our citizens have demonstrated unity and patriotism and understanding that all our values must be defended against the threat of international terrorism. The threat of terrorism is not new. The inactivity of the international community is not new either. We all remember how in the first half of the 20th century, the International, international community failed to unite in, against the threat of Nazism and we had the threat of the Second World War. Now we must learn our lessons. We must create an, a united anti-terrorism front, a, an international front which will be united under the auspices of the United Nations and act in strict accordance and coordination with international law. This means no double standards. It means a united approach, no contacts with any terrorist groups, no attempts to use them, no attempts to use the terrorist groups for their own ends. No business must be done with international terrorism. We all know who in Turkey, for example, collaborates. We all know that there is collaboration in Turkey with terrorist groups and who is making a lot of money out of this cooperation with terrorist groups. But the activity of those groups uh, is aimed against Russia, against Lebanon, and against many countries in the region. We all remember that Turkey gave safe haven to a lot of terrorists and rebels who were fighting against Russia for example, in Chechnya, and yet the people of Turkey are friendly towards Russia. They are industrious people who want to live in peace, people who work hard. And so the people of Turkey must understand that we speak separately um, when we're talking about the leadership of Turkey and the people of Turkey. The people are friends of Russia, but the leadership of Turkey is not really a friend. They have demonstrated their support for terrorism. They've demonstrated, they've, they've shown their true colors, and their shooting down of a Russian plane was a clear demonstration of this unfriendliness towards Russia. I do not understand, to be honest, dear friends, why they did that why they shot down our plane. We were prepared to cooperate with Turkey in any area. We were prepared to improve our economic and interpersonal ties in every aspect of bilateral relations, even more than their relations with their allies. But probably it is the will of Allah to punish the leadership of Turkey because they are clearly mad and crazy. But they are probably waiting for some dangerous reaction from Russia. But they will fail. We will not react. We, we will keep cool heads and 
react in a balanced way, because in whatever way we react, we will do it with responsibility. We will not retaliate with any military action. But if they think that the only retaliation from our side will be sanctions against the import of tomatoes, they are very, very wrong. We will remind them time and time again of their responsibility and they will regret many, many times in future their actions and what they did. We know what to do and how to do it. Now, to counter the terrorist threat, our special forces, our military police and law enforcement agencies are mobilized, but every citizen, every party, every organization must understand their responsibility in this united fight against terrorism and against the threat of terrorism. Our strength lies in mutual respect and dialogue, in mutual understanding and forgiveness. But at the same time, our actions against any demonstration of xenophobia or racism will be hard and tough. The historic foundation of our society and Russian governance lies in unity, multiculturalism, multi-religious attitudes and tolerance. The year 2016 will see the, the election of a new parliament, uh, elections for a new state Duma. In this address, I would like to quote one of uh, famous Russian historians uh, from the 19th century. He said, if one does not respect himself, no one else will respect this person or this country. So first of all, we must respect ourselves. Um, we are going to be cutting away from this address by Russian President Vladimir Putin to the Federal Assembly, uh, which is the State Duma, uh, lower house of the National Legislature, and the Federation Council, which is the upper house. Um, he's expected also to touch on matters in the financial and economic sectors, not only international security and uh, domestic security. Uh, stay tuned for a summation of all the salient points.